Hey everybody, this is Brian Boyle from Brian Boyle Music and the Producers Forum, back again with the third part of this video series. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about sidechain compression. Uh, if you missed the first two videos, we've built a beat in Pro Tools, then we added a virtual instrument, um, a pad more specifically, which usually works very well with sidechain compression. In this video, we will be tackling how to apply sidechain compression to a pad within Pro Tools and exactly what that means. So let's get started. Alright, so if you've been following along, this session looks familiar. We've got all of our tracks. We've got our, our beat here with these first, uh, first five. And then we've got our pad down here. This is our string pad. Here is expand, it was our virtual instrument. I'm gonna delete that for now because we no longer need that MIDI information. All right, so sidechain compression, what that is, it's, um, it's that ducking or pumping sound effect you hear in a lot of songs. So we've got all of the things we need here to apply sidechain compression. We've got our pad and our kick, and that's what we're going to be focusing on. Um, basically, sidechain compression is that pumping or ducking sound that you hear in many popular recordings these days. And what it is, is basically using one sound to control another. Um, in this case, we're going to use our, our short kick drum to control the pad. It's going, the kick drum is going to trigger the compressor on the pad. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this. It's going to ask you how many you want to duplicate. We're just going to do one and make sure active playlist is selected because that's what's going to copy those audio regions. All right, so now we've got two short kicks. And if we played this, it would be super loud because it would be playing two of the same sample at the same time. So it would be twice as loud. Um, instead, we're going to change the output of this to a bus. And I'm going to choose a mono bus, uh, bus 9. Now, because this track is set to bus 9, you're not actually going to hear any audio from it. All the audio that's coming out of this track is not being sent to our output, like in this case. Instead, it's being sent to a bus, so it's, going, it's not going to play out loud in the speakers. Instead, we want to make sure that this bus is being applied to a compressor, and we want to put that compressor on the string pad. So let's go down to our string pad and dynamics and create our compressor limiter. I'm going to change it to what I know is a good default setting for ducking or sidechain and I like this pump thing. The gain is up really high so you might want to turn that down and the threshold back up to make it a little more, little bit more, a uh, little less drastic I guess I should say. Um, and then we're going to come up to this key input section here. There's, as you can see there's no key input selected but we're going to select bus 9 which is the same bus we sent our duplicate kick track out to. Now everything's almost ready, but the difference is you still need to click this key. This is actually what turns sidechain compression on. You can actually see the word sidechain right on here. So if I hit this, that turns it on. I'm going to get out of here. And now if you listen, every time this kick drum sounds on our duplicate track, it's going to activate the compressor on this track. So why don't we take a listen to the string pad by itself without the compressor and then we'll take a listen with the sidechain compressor So as you can see, um, not very dynamic. There's not much change in volume. It just sounds very um, consistent and present. Now if I unbypass this compressor and I also solo our control signal, let's listen to what that sounds like with sidechain compression applied.
So as you can hear, the, the pad is sort of ducking uh, in a rhythmic pattern, and the rhythmic pattern is exactly what our kick drum is doing, um, or our control signal. Um, oftentimes, sidechain compression is used to make uh, the kick sound more present in the mix. Um, if there's too much going on, too many pads, too, many, uh, too much layering going on in a chorus or something like that, sidechain compression can often um, duck those sounds out of the way and allow the kick to shine through and sound louder and more present in the mix. It's a great technique for house music, pop music, uh, techno music, you know, and there's really endless applications for this technique. Um, it's very, very cool, very fun to play around with. And um, this is how you apply it. Um, you can also choose to send this out on a bus to bus nine, and that would um, do the exact same thing as creating a duplicate track and making the output bus nine. The difference there is that um, when you have a duplicate track, you can control each thing individually. If I just wanted this to, to be a consistent quarter kick the whole way, I could do that. Um, whereas if you do it out on, on, on bus nine on the actual track itself, um, you're limited to side chaining to that kick drum pattern. That your, your control and kick drum can't be two separate patterns. Uh, hopefully that makes sense and it wasn't too confusing. So let's take a listen to the whole song with side chain compression applied. All right, everybody, that's it for this video on sidechain compression. I hope you found it helpful and it wasn't too confusing. If you still have some questions, please feel free to head over to brianboylemusic.com where there is a post specifically dedicated to sidechain compression and how to apply it. If you do better with text as opposed to video, that might be a better solution for you. Also a reminder that brianboylemusic.com is now offering personal one-on-one -on -one Pro Tools lessons. If you'd like to learn more, please visit brianboylemusic.com and click on the Lessons tab for more information. Thanks again for watching. Please feel free to subscribe to my channel. If you found this helpful, follow me on Twitter at brianboylemusic.com. And as always, keep on making music.